the microphones around as quickly as we can. You know, for, for myself and staff and the leaders, scary, scary game because of the way they shoot the basketball. Uh, we watched at Rutgers, we watched the Purdue game, and they played some flawless uh, basketball, shooting threes and really guarding uh, and making life difficult. Chris does a great job. And you knew in the second half, because of his leadership, you knew they would make a run, you knew they would come back and cut it to single digits. And, and you got to fight that as, as, as we develop and mature and gain these valuable experiences, you got to be able to punch back when they, when they go on their runs. And I felt like we did that. I, Lamar Stevens, to give the ball up, you know he wants to shoot that, to, to stop the run, to give it up to Miles Dredd, to me, was a, was a huge play in the game. And uh, I think Miles is playing with incredible confidence right now. And the team overall is playing with incredible confidence. I thought we had two good practices, and we came out and did what we had to do. Pat, for everything that you've accomplished. Nice haircut, Mark. Thank you. I appreciate it. For yeah. everything that you guys have accomplished, is the next step kind of learning how to put a game away a little bit earlier? I know that's, you know, nitpicking. Yeah. But you've been in this position multiple times. To your credit, you do put it away ultimately, but you get those little stretches where they're able to kind of drop back in. Yeah, I, I'll say two things. First, it's we're in the Big Ten. Teams are not going to roll over in the Big Ten. Coaches are not going to allow their teams to roll over in the Big Ten. I've been in that situation my first few few years or more plus. I've been in that situation. Leaders don't let their teams, you know, quit, stop playing, and that's what he did. Second is, I, I, I would agree we need to finish, right? To to be a, as good a team as we can be. That's why I always say we can be better. You know, uh, that, that's what excites me. It's scary that this team can continue to develop and grow and get better um, because we do need to start trying, at least attempting to, attempting to put teams away. Pat, you mentioned Miles playing with some confidence. How important has his kind of resurgence as a reliable catch-and-shoot guy been with Myron's absence the last few games, and how valuable is that to have him kind of playing with confidence when you do eventually get Myron back to have both of them on the floor together? Yeah, you know, I'll start with, I know you want to talk about the threes, but I'm going to start with his defense because having him in there, we're just, we're, we're bigger, we're stronger. Um, there's a lot of communication out there because he knows exactly what we do. Um, in, in that regard, our defense has gotten even better. It was solid with MJ, now it's even better with, uh, with Miles right now. And the fact that we're able to, to tell him, hey, we're going to bring off the bench, and he was, you know, you know, good about it, you know, good about it. Nobody wants to be pulled out of the starting lineup, but, you know, I give him a lot of credit for what he's doing. Um, he didn't sulk. He didn't complain. Um, he just kept doing his job, and now you're seeing some, some of the fruits of that labor. You have ultimately bigger fish to fry, but to get to 20 wins, to get to 10 wins in the conference, these are ac accomplishments in their own right. How do you let these guys and yourself kind of enjoy where you are in this process without getting too caught up in a moment that you know ultimately is not the end goal? Yeah, we've, we've been talking about moments since the beginning of this season, and here's another moment for us. You know, I wanted them to enjoy this with their families for the next few hours, but also sleep is very important right now and staying healthy. We, we had a lot of guys sick. You know, MJ wasn't the only one sick, and we had some guys playing, um, you know, with some colds, some sniffles, things of that nature. So, you know, you got to sacrifice right now. You know, you can celebrate after the season. Right now, we were, we're trying to do something special, something that Penn State hasn't seen before. Pat, over here. Um, with Jamari, it's been known his impact on the game defensively and what he does and guarding you know the other team's point guard. But how can you assess you know in his third season how he's been able to run the point, especially in, in recent games with Myra not out there and you know hitting three three pointers today for the first time in his career, coming up with six assists, like his total impact on the game. Yeah, his impact for me is defensively. Um, he has guarded some of the best point guards in the entire country, and he has held his own. And he's in the gym all the time. So it was only a matter of time before the ball started going through the hoop. And, again, we're very confident in Jamari. I never tell Jamari not to shoot. He just tries to take good ones. And when he takes good ones, you know, he's got a better chance of making them. I thought he took really, really good ones tonight. And then his pace and tempo for our offense. You know, we really wanted to push. We really wanted to play with speed. We wanted you know, teams to try to catch up to us. And that's, that's him. That's him getting us organized and setting the table for everybody. Pat, you called a timeout less than four minutes into the game. What were you seeing that you didn't like, and what changed from that point forward? Yeah, it, it was really about us defensively. 
we've been hanging our hat on defending and rebounding. Our stats over this eight-game win streak has been really terrific. Field goal percentage, three-point field goal percentage, and rebounding uh, has been fantastic. And I didn't see that. I didn't see that tenacity. I didn't see the stances. I didn't hear the communication because defensively, first half, they're in front of us. So I'm listening and trying to hear everything. And uh, I just I, I felt like we didn't get any stops. And we were just going back and forth, score, 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 score. And I don't want to play that way. Um, so a little timeout just to remind them what our identity is. I know we're scoring the ball at a high clip right now, but our identity is defending and rebounding and, and make sure we do that. So just a quick reminder, and I thought we did a really nice job from the 13-minute mark on. When you called that timeout, I don't know if you noticed <coughs> that your team brought each other together for for a conference before you brought them together. Do you also get the sense as they're maturing – that they sort of expect what what's going to be coming and they find the significance in the game of, of when they need to turn things up or, or get focused. Yeah, it's a great point. Um, I mean, Lamar really took the huddle. I mean, Lamar got after them. He, he, he just said, we're not playing Penn State basketball. We're not defending. We're not rebounding. We're not talking. And I just reinforced one or two things, but it was really Lamar. He knew I called the timeout. He grabbed him before I even got into the huddle. So that's a great sign of leadership and what the what these guys want to do. And they're connected. I, I think for Lamar to be able to, to teach at that moment and really uh, motivate his teammates, you know, that takes ego list, that takes connection, that takes love, that takes trust. Some guys might want to bark back, but not this team. It seemed like earlier in the year guys develop, obviously, but Seth might not have been as big of a part of equation earlier in the season with MJ out and how he's kind of gone into the role even before that, how would you kind of evaluate just how he's developed, you know, over the course of the last month or so? Yeah, he continues to get better. Obviously, it wasn't his best day minute-wise, um, shooting-wise, but he continues to get better. And I said that to you the last time we talked. If I threw him in the fire in November, who knows where he'd be right now? Because freshmen, there, they, there is a wall. It's an imaginary wall. There is a wall mentally and and physically, you know, you could hit that wall. And right now he continues to show up and, and get better. Do you have any timetable for when MJ will be back? And, you know, when he does come back, do you expect his workload to be the same as it always is? Or are you going to ease him back? Into no, things? I think we need to ease him back. But it's day to day. We keep talking to the docs. We keep talking to Saz, our trainer, and uh, just keep evaluating. And I think you guys know me well enough by now. I'm never going to put a player in a situation where he's going to foul or continue to get sick or, n or not get better. I we would never do that. Um, Penn State wouldn't want that either, and I don't want that. Thank you.